Hey there everyone, so Gemini has released their competitor to Cloud Code that is called Gemini CLI, your open source AI agent. Yes guys, this is open source. Let's have a look at what we have here. So you can see you have 60 requests per minute, 1k model requests per day and it's open source and it is available free of charge guys. That is nice to see. You can see it says the free license gets you access to Gemini 2.5 Pro and it's massive 1 million context window. For this you have to log in using your Google account. So I'll be telling you all of that and showing you how it's done. So you can have a look at this. This is the interface that we are likely going to see. So how are we going to test this? Actually, I'll be asking it to generate a complete website, you know, with multiple pages and assets. You can see I have a folder called test website that I've just created and it has a lot of files. You can have a look, you know, so many images and various JSON files with all the details, even videos and things like that. It will have to understand all these assets and come up with the best website it can possibly build. So without further ado, let's get started. So you can see this is the repo of Gemini CLI in GitHub. I'll be giving the link in the description so you can directly access it. Let's have a look at the instructions how to get it started. So this is the quick start. The prerequisites are that you require Node.js version 18 or higher. So you can go onto this web page and install the Node.js for your specific operating system, whether it's Windows, Mac OS or anything else. So if I just type Node, I can see the version that I have. I have version 22.9.0 so it should be sufficient so what we have to do is we have to open up a new terminal and copy this command after we have installed node.js just copy this command and paste it over here and let's run it and I think this should be enough now you can see it says need to install the following packages google github google gemini gemini cli so we'll just enter y to proceed so now you can see it has started it says gemini tips for getting started and these are the tips it is asking us to select a theme so i'll go with atom one dark also at the bottom you can see gemini 2.5 pro is selected and it also shows the context which is left so it says 100 percent context left that is nice we can enter to select so let's hit enter and it is now asking select the authentication method login with google gemini api key or vertex ai we will go with login with google because that will give us the free access so let's enter it and now you can see it has opened up the page where I can sign in and now it is signed in it says Gemini code assistant and the Gemini CLI are now authorized to access your account and now you can see it has started. So now remember whenever you want to start up Gemini CLI this is the command that you have to use. So how to do it? First what we'll do is we'll open up a new terminal and we'll go to the folder where we want to work with. So it is in documents and then test website. So I am in the folder where I want to work. So, so here we will run the command. So as you can see it is loading and they should start it and you can see Gemini has started and also at the bottom you can actually see the folder it is working in. So it's working in document test website, the folder where we actually want to work. So before starting just look at what commands do we have. So you can see these are the commands that we have help, docs, clear, theme and various other things. It also has support to MCP and all. So you can check that out. So let's also look at the tools that it has access to. So these are the CLI tools that Gemini has access to. It can read the folder, read a file, search text, find files, edit, write file, web fetch, read many files. It has access to shell commands. It can save memories. Okay, nice. And it also has Google search. So let's ask it. What files do you see in this directory? Let's see if it's actually able to, you know, find out the files that are present in this directory. So it has listed 99 items and it has used the read folder command. And now you can see it has understood all the files. So we'll be using all of these files to, you know, come up with the website guys. So this is the prompt that I'm sending. You can pause and have a read. So what I'm asking is it has to build a complete website. It has to take screenshots and iterate on it. So I'm asking which library to use. You know, first we have to set up and give Gemini CLI the ability to, you know, take screenshots and understand it. So if you look at the end, it is saying what is best to use playwright, puppeteer or Selenium. You have you have to autonomously take screenshot and have a look at various sections of the website and iterate. Tell me what will be best. So let's send this. Okay, you can see it's saying analyzing the best approach, defining the user's goal. You can see it says escape to cancel and also shows how many seconds the model is taking to think. Okay, so it says given my capabilities, playwright is the best choice and it has come up with the process. It says my process will be to install playwright, start a local web server for your project, use a script to command playwright to open a browser, navigate to the local server and save a screenshot. So now you can see it is trying to install playwright using shell commands. It is asking yes, allow once, allow always or no. So I would prefer allow once and I think that should enable it to install it. So now you can see this is the term terminal command. It is trying to install playwright and it's downloading it. So now you can see it has done with the installation and everything and it's right starting to write the code, but that is not what it should do. So, so I'll just say no and we are back into the message. 
So whenever you want to, you know, stop it in the middle, this is what you can do. And it has actually cancelled writing to index HTML. So now we'll be especially, you know, saying what we want. We'll also have a stopwatch at the side to understand how much time does it take. Now you can look at the whole prompt. This is a very big prompt. You can pause and have a read. What I'm telling it is who, for whom are we building this website and it has to be multi-paged and you can't return to me until you have built the whole website and you know you have took multiple screenshots and checked whether it's according to your plan or not. It can return to me if it wants to you know write files or need any permissions to download anything things like that but it should not ask me that okay I have built some part of the website now have a look and tell me whether if it's okay or not. That should not happen. It should build the whole website and, and I'll be only seeing it in the final look. At least this is what we are prompting. We'll see how it goes. This prompt surely did work when I used it with cursor and other IDEs. Let's see if it happens with Gemini CI. And since it has access to Playwright, it can take screenshots of the website and automatically watch it. Having said that, let's hit enter and let's start. So the timer has already started and now you can see it is saying constructing the index.html. And while it's generating, please make sure to, you know, also watch the model that is being currently used because sometimes it can switch to Gemini 2.5 flash without my knowledge and things like that. If it does, then I'll try to come back to Gemini 2.5 pro, but whatever it is, everything is happening autonomously. So it says my process will be as follows. Analyze project data. I'll start examining, examining course details.json, faq.json, testimonials, json to structure the website's content scaffold the site i will create the core html files a custom style sheet and a javascript file and it will use bootstrap framework so i think it is going to use html css and js and it says build page by page iterate with screenshots so now it is starting to read the json files and it says i will i have analyzed the json data and i will now write the following files okay it says api error unexpected line format and response so i don't know what to say we'll just hit continue so it did get into some kind of an error. Maybe there was some issue in formatting, you know, which we call linter errors. That could be the issue, but it should have automatically, you know, found out that linter errors and should have solved it. You can see it is, I think this, this comma was the problem, which, which it was not able to understand. Okay. So it has generated the files and it's saying, yes, allow once we'll do allow always, I think so that it can automatically run and instead of asking us it can just do it so i have done always to index html courses html about contact styles.css and lot of that there are more files i think yes allow always allow always okay so i have did that we are still using gemini 2.5 pro we have 98 percent of the context left okay so now it was trying to edit the file and it got into an error and it says i apologize for the error it seems there was an issue and it is automatically trying to correct it that is nice. It says now that the script is corrected, I will start a local web server and take a screenshot of the home page to access the current design. So we'll just and say yes, allow always. So it will now take a screenshot, I guess. So we'll again enter yes, allow always launching the screenshot process. So I have taken a screenshot of the home page. I will now analyze the screenshot to identify areas. So most probably it should not again ask me for, you know, the permission and everything. Now it has taken a short screenshot of the courses page and everything. It is taking screenshot of each page and trying to iterate over it. So you can see it says launching the screenshot process for the about.html page. It says I have taken screenshot for about as in contact pages. I will now stop the local web server. The website is ready for your review. You can view the website by opening index.html file in your browser. Okay. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll just enter yes allow once and then we'll ask it to you know start it in a local host port okay now start the website in a local host port so that i can see it let's see what it does it was pretty fast guys it was able to get it done in i think five minutes including my including my narration and everything maybe you can cut two minutes out of it okay it says initiating website access but it's kind of stuck here i guess i don't know what is happening so okay so nothing is happening what we'll do is i'll just enter escape and i'll send the prompt again let's see if it's able to actually start it i mean i can go to the folder and start it using and start it by you know opening up index.html but i want to you know start it from here that is what i usually do in cursor i see the model to you know start it in a local server so for some weird reason it is taking time so i think we don't have any choice other than starting the website from the back end so 
we have all the html files okay so this is the website it has created find your future with shanti educational consultancy explore courses okay so there's nothing in the courses guys this is about us this is contact it has the google maps nice but uh, i mean it looks like a very basic website guys i mean it is very bad let me actually show you what i was able to build you know with the uh, cloud force on it so let's start it in a local server that is the reason guys i have said gemini 2.5 pro is a good model but not the best for coding you know when it comes to aesthetic designs there is no competition with cloud models now it's getting started i'll try to show you this on a local host so you can see this is the loading page and once it loads the website will start so you can see it's loading and this is the website guys it was generated in one single prompt you know most of the generated you can, when i go into the courses page you can see all the courses are listed so this was done in one shot there were some things here and there but most of it was done in one shot guys using cloud force on it so let us give us the feedback we'll have to hit escape and Okay, so this is the prompt that we are that we are sending, guys. Let's send this and let's see what it does. Cloud Force on it was able to you know understand everything and was able to generate very good website in cursor. So it says you are absolutely right. My previous work was not up to the standard you expect, and I apologize for that. I will re-examine the course details dot JSON. You can see course details dot JSON. It has list of all the courses and you know the details and everything. But nothing of that sort was implemented in this website, guys. I mean, this looks pathetic. What can I say? We do have a contact us option, but other than that, it was able to identify the people and image. But you can see nothing is there in the courses page. Okay, it says I have taken a screenshot of the courses page. The courses are now correctly displayed with their images and descriptions. I will now proceed to refine the overall design and layout of the website, ensuring a consistent and visual appealing experience across all pages. Let's get rid of the website I was generating. Okay, it says slow response time detected. Automatically switching from Gemini 2.5 Pro to Gemini 2.5 Flash for fastest response for the remainder of this. System. You can utilize a Gemini API key. Okay, you can switch authentication methods by typing auth. So now it has actually switched to Gemini 2.5 Flash. We'll we'll let it run for quite a while, and then after that, I'll you know end it and try to start again with Gemini 2.5 Pro. Now you can see Gemini 2.5 Flash is significantly faster. It has generated a bunch of code. Okay, let's kill the local web server and okay, the website is now ready for your review. Let's see if things have changed. Let's try saying start the website in a local port like 8000. Let's see if it's able to do it since it's using Gemini 2.5 flash now. So it says 8000 is already in use. Okay, yeah, it is already in use. Nice to identify that. It is trying to use 8080. So I'll just mention sure. Okay, so it has started up the server, I guess, in localhost 8080. And this is what we see. So what our student says, undefined, undefined, undefined. And we do have frequently asked questions. I think that it has got it from, you know, the faq.json that we had let's look at the courses page okay now we do have the courses page that is nice to see let's click any course so we are not able to click that yeah but we do have all the courses and all the page let's look at other pages about us you can see things are not at scale and although the website looks a little bit better but i think it could have done better so we'll just hint say x escape and will mention the testimonials are not visible i just see undefined on the home page also the website looks very basic so take screenshots of the pages analyze the screenshots and see what's wrong this doesn't look like a very good web page Re reiterate this process multiple times so let's see so we are 21 minutes into this and it it was slightly able to understand our intention and fix things but but i think we have much work to do so it has come up with its next steps it says typography enhancement color palette uh, color palette refinement layout and spacing adjustments subtle animation transitions image optimizations let's see what it does so it says taking screenshots of all pages using playwright it says the website is now ready for your review you can view it by open it opening the index.html file so i'm mentioning start it with localhost 8080 every single time when you are done with the edits so let's enter this i hope it follows that so that i don't have to always say that again and again okay it says i will ensure to start the server on localhost 8080 every time i'm done with the edges in the future so it says the website is ready for your review you can exit it at localhost 8080 so this is what we have you can see it has actually messed this up the text is black you know in front of a black background so it's not contrasting and i'm not able to see it the testimonials are here but it does still have that undefined boxes let's look at the courses if anything has changed here so okay no changes over here and about us is kind of simple 
nothing special here so what we'll do is we'll hit slash exit and that will you know and the total interface it says in input tokens were 1,518,354 we generated 25,000 of tokens so we'll start it up again and now you can see now it is again in gemini 2.5 pro so whenever this issue happens what you should do is if there is any pending work let it happen with gemini 2.5 flash okay everyone so it has been some time and it has made some changes you can see the image has changed we have the testimonials over here but you can see it is visible as a very big black button we do have 60 requests per hour but that is not enough and if you are asking it to iteratively work on something you can get into issues and if i look at the whole website it it is not that good guys i mean it's kind of basic but just have it and most of this website was you know you know all of these options they were built in one single response with the help of cloud force on it i think that if you use cursor and gemini 2.5 pro you can come up with a very better response if you look at the about as page not, nothing much has changed but the font and the font color has changed so it's free you can try it out and see if it works for you but i would say giving a one-time payment to cursor and using it will be better because cursor now has unlimited you know responses there is no fast or slow responses you can have unlimited access to it when in peak times you might see slower responses but anyways you have a lot of models with openai o3 and gemini 2.5 pro itself included and i think according to what i've heard in the online community cloud code is better than this because it has cloud models which are agentically better so this was gemini cli guys it is a rough start but i think gradually it should improve i hope i was able to cover everything with that being said i'll catch you guys in the next one